Hello and welcome to Catalan News. The sentence for one of the biggest corruption scandals in Catalonia is out. The scheme included officials from one of the most iconic cultural institutions in the country, as well as the party that governed Catalonia for over 20 years. And the judge found both sides guilty, with sentences of up to nine years in prison and in order to pay back millions of euros. When the issue came to light in 2009, the case shook Catalan society. Now, more than eight years later, the country will try to move on. Here, Catalan News will go in depth about the long awaited sentence and will also get you the latest clash between Mariano Rajoy and Carles Puigdemont. It all started back in 2009 when Catalan police officers stormed into the Palau de la Musica concert hall, an iconic modernist building. This was also one of the most emblematic places where the Catalan bourgeoisie met most often over the last century. And what was the outcome of the raid? Finding out that the Palau managers had plundered millions of euros to pay for holidays, home refurbishments, and even for the wedding of one of their daughters. The investigation also led to the Convergencia Party, which had used the institution as a pipeline to illegally finance itself. The so-called Palau case involved former officials of the Palau de la Musica Concert Hall and Convergencia Party, which governed Catalonia for more than 20 years. The court sentenced the two men in charge of the concert hall for decades to nine and seven years in prison. Both confessed to embezzling funds from the cultural entity into their own bank accounts. The court found them guilty of taking 23 million euros from the institution. The case also involved the major Catalan political party, Convergencia. It was ordered to repay 6.6 .6 million euros as it was accused of rigging public tenders in exchange for commissions to illegally finance itself. The money from companies was transferred through false concert hall donations, which were later sent to the party. As Convergencia was found guilty of illegal funding, its former treasurer has been sentenced to four years in jail. One former official of the concert hall admitted to the commissions that the party received. Primero era del, del 3%, mm -hmm. y después fue del 4%. No, porque Convergencia, Convergencia quería más dinero. The involvement of Convergencia, relaunched later as PDCAT in 2016, turned the case into a political scandal. Yet the main firm suspected of having taken part in the scheme has been absolved. Another trial over the alleged illegal funding of a party kicked off today in Valencia as well. In this case, the party involved is the People's Party, accused of irregularly financing two electoral campaigns between 2007 and 2008. The case is even affecting a former vice president of the Valencian country. So far, several business people have admitted to taking part in a scheme involving illegally funding of the party in exchange for certain privileges for their own companies. Within the first hours of the sentence being out, the defenses announced that they would submit an appeal to the Spanish Supreme Court. Artur Mas, leader of Convergencia for many years, negatively assessed the judge's decision. While the appeals are solved, the public prosecutor wants some precautionary measures for the people convicted, it announced today. It also welcomed the sentence, as did the private prosecutor, along with some Catalan parties. Y estamos satisfechos, por un lado, porque hay las, las condenas que purifican y responsabilizan del espolio la entidad cultural Palau de la Música, y por otro lado, y sobre todo, porque hay condenas tanto en los directivos del Palau como en el Tesoro de Convergencia por tráfico de influencias. Después de vuit años eh, tocaba eh, esta sentencia ya y, por tanto, que hagi de asumir responsabilidades que els asumeixi. Demanem y empassem al señor Puigdemont, demanem y empassem al señor Mas a que donguin explicaciones políticas, a que se disculpen davant de la ciutadana i ciutadans de Catalunya. Doncs Convergència ha estat a les institucions i ha estat governant Catalunya, enganyant i estafant els catalans. Mai s'ha pogut demostrar que hi havia irregularitats en la manera de judicar les obres públiques i per tant, si no hi ha irregularitat en la manera de judicar l'obra pública, no hi ha tracte de favor. This long-lasting corruption case has pushed the Catalan political debate from the headlines for a short while. Yet, two days before the political term starts in Parliament, the clash between the Spanish government and the pro-independence majority in the chamber has seen another episode. Today, Mariano Rajoy made it clear that he will not tolerate Puigdemont's move to be sworn in as Catalan president from Brussels. In fact, the Parliament lawyers, in a non-binding report, said this evening that appointing him at a distance is not possible. Swearing in anyone as Catalan president from Brussels is impossible, 
This is what the Spanish president Mariano Rajoy said this morning regarding Carlos Puigdemont's plans to take office by proxy. Rajoy added that trying to do so will have an evident consequence. Y para tomar posesión tiene que hacerlo físicamente, porque no se puede tomar posesión desde Bruselas. Y si no lo hace, el artículo 155 seguirá en vigor. His exceptional measures, including direct rule of the country, are only to be lifted when a new Catalan president is legally appointed. And for Rajoy, swearing someone in who is not in Catalonia is out of the question. But Puigdemont is not planning to return in the near future. If he sets foot on Catalan soil, he risks being arrested and jailed. That's why he wants to be appointed as president via video or through an MP representing him. In response to the Spanish president, Puigdemont tweeted that the People's Party only got four seats out of 135 in the Catalan chamber, and yet it is still governing Catalonia. He called on Rajoy to be democratic and to respect the parliament's decision to reinstate his government. While other unionist parties, such as the Socialists, also rejected Puigdemont's idea of a remote appointment, a pro-independent Esquerra official reaffirmed the party's support for Puigdemont, but skipped over the legality of the move. They also avoided the issue over who will replace Carme Forcadell as parliament president. Rumours about former MEP Ernest Maragall being chosen for the post are increasing, though. The vote to appoint a parliament president is to be held on Wednesday. The aftermath of the Catalan election, and especially the fact that some pro-independence leaders are still in jail, is also a matter of debate in Europe. Renate Weber, member of the European Parliament for the Liberal Group, said to the Catalan news agency that these imprisonments are a unique situation in Europe. The politician, who was once an ad hoc judge at the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg, also expressed disappointment at the European Union's attitude and expressed that decisions taken by the Spanish government are hard to understand. Normally, you continue to keep a person in the prison if that person is a threat for the public order or for, um, I don't know, doing some activities, which at least in the, the case of Mr. Junqueras, it's not the case. Difficult to understand the, the diversity of the decisions taken in this case regarding each of the person who was accused. In other news, on Sunday, Pau Perez would have been 35 years old but he was tragically killed in the aftermath of the Barcelona terror attack in August. The perpetrator of the attacks stabbed him and fled with his car to avoid the police. Friends and family decided to hold a special ceremony in his memory, coinciding with his birthday. To pay homage to the young man whose life was sadly cut short, friends and family planted 15 olive trees. Olive trees are a symbol of peace, and Pau, aside from being the name of the Christian Saint Paul, also means peace in Catalan. Around 100 people attended the private ceremony of Pau Pérez, who was one of the 16 casualties of the attacks. As well as planting olive trees, close friends also planted an oak in his honor, alongside a plaque reading, You Are Eternal. We move on now to a traditional event held every year in Catalonia around January 17th, when dozens of carriages driven by animals parade in hundreds of towns throughout the country. We are in the 21st century and 95% of the Catalan population is urban. But no matter what, farmers are the protagonists of this day when horses, donkeys and carriages wander even in Barcelona, the capital of the country. These parades carry a broad audience, but not everyone knows the origin of this tradition. Animals have a patron saint and protector in Catalonia, San Antonio Abad, or San Anthony. And in mid-January throughout the country, the holiday Tres Toms is celebrated in his and their honor. This is done throughout the month, although the actual date is on January 17. Even in the Catalan capital of Barcelona, the tradition is still observed, with one of the neighborhoods already welcoming Mayor Ada Colau and her family on one of the carriages. Traditions for this holiday vary, even including people bringing their pets to be blessed by St. Anthony. But the most iconic one of all is the horse parade. The spectacle is in fact also a homage to peasant farmers and wagon riders, where onlookers can marvel at traditional, well-preserved historic carriages that are ridden through the streets, originally serving for anything from farm work to firefighting and even funeral services. 
In the southern Catalan town of Valls, near Tarragona, there is a particular point of the parade route that draws attention, a descent in a square in the old town where the animals pick up speed and riders have to maneuver not one but two corners. This feat is performed to the encouraging cheers and applause of the surrounding crowd. Let's talk about a pretty different kind of spectacle, Fira Tarraga. While it shares the fact that it happens mainly in the streets with El Tres Toms, Fira Tarraga is more about the performing arts. Today we learned that the fair will present different shows in Chile this January. This will help the international reputation of the theater festival. The aim of the agreement signed today with the festival Santiago Off of the South American capital also aims to help export Catalan talents abroad. Talents such as that of Pelat, the artist that you're seeing just now, who challenges our idea of art by making us connect more with simpler things, such as huge logs or nature. And that's all for us today. After so many displays of Catalan culture, we want to show you the place that was officially named as its capital in 2017, the southern town of Reus. As last year's capital of Catalan culture, it held close to 700 activities and it's gearing up to act as the city of music in 2018. To celebrate the past year, it held an event in the town square with acrobatic dancing, singing, live music and pyrotechnics. And let's not forget the most exhilarating show of them all, fireworks. We hope you enjoy and we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs>